Welcome to the online ministry of Faith Christian Fellowship. FCF is a dynamic word and spirit empowered church where faith and family meet. If you would like more information about our church or other media resources, please visit us at faithchristianfellowship.com. We hope you enjoy this message. chapter 3. I'm going to finish this message up tonight. You heard it. You heard it. Exodus chapter 3 and then we'll, we'll just see where the Lord is going to take us in this. Just want to be real nuts and boltsy with you tonight. Just want to just really just share some things from my heart. Help you out. We've been talking about the subject of change. Uh, the subject, subject of change and uh, uh, your very makeup of your body will tell you about change. I mean, it will. I mean, you know, you lose approximately, now some of you maybe a little more, and some of you don't get this back, but you lose approximately 100 strands of hair a day, and they're replacing itself daily. Yeah. You know, do you lose between a half a pound to 1.6 pounds of skin a year? So you're all the time losing weight. <laughs> But you're all the time replacing those skin cells. Right? I mean, look at a baby. You're born as a baby. You grow. You advance. Right? I mean, change is a part of life. And if you're not changing, something's wrong. If a baby stops its growth, they are investigating why. You were never called to be born again. You, I've already preached all this. I'm not going back and preach it again. I want to mention it just so we can have it in our heads. The, the altar experience, and I will say that, it could be at an altar at a church or in your house or uh, in your car. Wherever the altar was that you gave your heart to Jesus, it was not the end point. It was just the beginning for you. Now you begin to be in the process of change. Come on. I mean, I, I, well, I don't really want to, well, yeah, I guess I could mention this. It's kind of like a pregnant lady. I mean, you have the... Uh, you guys, we're, we're an adult audience in here, so we can share this. You know, I mean, there's the fireworks and everything, the, the intimacy and the fireworks and the fun that, that creates the baby. Amen. Just shake your head. All of you want to laugh. Yeah, that's good. Don't worry. I'm, I'm getting ready to start a big relationship series soon, so don't worry. We'll get into that. But the deal is, is this, is that after the conception, there's a time frame of change that starts to happen. And inside of that time frame, all the fun kind of leaves. Are you, are you with me here? Am I digging a hole? I think I am. <laughs> but, but you see, you see, you're the one that done this to me. <laughs> right? But, but it's in this process of change and there's development on the inside and life is, is on the inside and there's something just changing. But once you, you know, the scripture says once a lady, I'm paraphrasing, it's the PIV, right? The Paul International Version. So but once the lady goes through the birth and all the pain leaves, she forgets about the baby or forgets about the pain because of what she's birthed. So you can go through a lot of hard stuff in your life and change starts to happen. But once you come out on the other side of it, you forget about all the pain. Because now you've stepped into a new dimension. Has anybody in here ever been thankful for something that's happened in your life that you didn't expect? Didn't want? But you look back on it and you say what? Boy, I'm glad I went through that because when I went through it I learned something and I've grown through it and now I'm a stronger person and now I'm able to help somebody else with the issue or the problem come on has anybody else ever found theirself in that those shoes before and it's not that listen now it's not that 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 it was God or that it was good but God could knows how to turn it around for our good so, so don't ever, now I've told you this before, but don't ever blame God. Because God is so good at what he does. 
He's so well at fixing it and you come out on the other side blessed. If you don't watch out, you'll look back and say, well, he caused it. No, he's just that good at what he does. <laughs> and he blesses you through it. And he helps you through it. Come on, and he fixes stuff that needs to be fixed through it. Am I making sense to you? So, so, so change, change, change is a very, very important thing in our lives. Now, we're all going to encounter change. It could be a change of jobs, change in health, change in relationships. Maybe a new normal after the, death of, after the death of a loved one. Unemployment. A change in physical strength. A change in where you live. A change in the stage of life. Change in homes. Empty nest changes. Changes in your children as they move from one stage to the next. Change. And we have to learn to navigate through the change. The, the last three weeks we focused a lot on change from the inside. And we're going to continue to talk about that tonight, but now we're going to know what we need to do when change does come. The unexpected changes. The situations that come up in life that none of us asked for. It's just part of living in a broken, fallen world. Sometimes change happens because of the choices we make. Sometimes it's the stupid decisions of someone else. I won't say stupid decisions on our part, but decisions. <laughs> no, it's the stupid decisions we make. Has anybody ever had a piece of stupid before? Or the choices of someone else. Or, I'm going to throw this out there. It may be actually the Lord sending a test your way. That way something can grow on the inside of you. Now, I don't have time to break that down. But there's definitely a difference between when the Lord tests you. And when the enemy comes to tempt you. And test you. The enemy's test is always there to bring you backwards. And it's always to kill. Steal. And destroy. God. He, he'll send things your way at times. Jonah found himself in a storm. It, it, he did. Who was one that sent that storm? He had to get him off that boat. Right? Get him into a, the belly of a whale to get him out on the shore. So are you with me here? I don't have time to break all that down. We have to understand and discern where the storm comes from. It's very important. But we're going to change no matter what. No matter if it's an unexpected situation, an expected situation, we're going to change. And that's what I want to get across to us tonight. In Exodus chapter 3, look here in verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely, <clears throat> I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry cause of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows so I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land to a land flowing with milk and honey I think that's very interesting God says I'm going to come to get them take them out to take them into a good land but how many you know it, almost like it was like a hop skip and a jump like Right? But how many of you know that there was 40 years in a wilderness before they ever inherited a land with milk and honey? And matter of fact, if you read on, he said, once I bring you into the land, I'm going to bring you into the land to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Pet Perizzites, the Hivites, the Satellites, and the Jebusites, and all the termites, and all that. <laughs> right? So even in a good land, there's enemies. Even in a good land, there's, 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 there's situations. Even in a good land. So he goes, he says, listen, and, and it's in this land of in-between and, and transition and change that I want to talk about tonight because it's very, very, very important. It, it, the, this land of transformation, 
And what's trying to take place in us? See, a wilderness for one person can be a greenhouse. For another, it can be a graveyard. Now, I'll say that again. A wilderness for one person can be a greenhouse. But on the other hand, for another person, it can be a graveyard. Which means this. You can either grow in the wilderness or die in the wilderness. It's up to you. It ain't a matter of whether or not you're going to change or change is coming. It's coming. There's a storm with your name on it. There's a storm with my name on it. There's something that all of us are going to face in our life and we're going to be forced to change. But what we do in the moment of change is going to determine whether we're going to grow in it and we're going to advance and be pushed through the birth, uh, the birthing canal of this time into another world or we're going to go and we're going to stay and we're going to abort the plan of God for our lives. That's good preaching right there. That's good. I, got, I just got cold chills. It's in this land you're forced to make a decision. It's in this land. This land of in between. This land of change. That, that so many people let change destroy them. Instead of coming out on the other side. Reshaped and transformed. And that's the purpose. Whether it's God, whether it's, whether it's not God, He's more concerned with your character. He's more concerned about developing things in you than, your, than, than, than you coming out on the other, other side. He's, he's going to take you out on the other side, but He's much more concerned about uh, you being uh, who God's called you to be. and He's more concerned about developing things on the inside of you in this moment instead of just delivering you. Some of you just wanting delivered so bad, would you just stop and get your focus off of deliverance and start looking for what God, what are you trying to transform in me right now? Amen. We get our focus all the time on the end of a thing. And I'm not saying that's true. We need to have hope. And, and we need to have the end of the thing in mind. But at the, at the end of the day, God's trying to do something in you right now. I don't know when deliverance is coming. But the Bible says God will always show up. Right on time. In due season, you'll reap if you don't faith. I don't know when due season is for me or for you or for anyone else. But I know there's a due season and God wants me to bring me through it. But he's more interested in doing something in me right now and changing me from glory to glory, level to level, and transforming me into the image of God's Son. That's what he's trying to do inside of me right now. That's what he's trying to do with you and I in the middle of the chain. So if you, instead of you and I asking why, let's turn the why into a what. What, what, am I, what do I need to develop? Because it seems like, listen, there's nothing like a pop quiz. See, it's okay when you're preparing. You can put all the nice answers, the patent answers down. You can memorize. See, I was like that in school. I was like that in school. I mean, I, I, I made good grades, and, uh, and, uh, but I could, Bill Smith would always say, well, that Paul Matthew could study with the, you know, with the TV blaring. I could. Bill would talk about that all the time. But the deal is, is this, is that I, I, learned, I learned how to really study when I got to college. Because in high school, I really didn't study. But the deal was, I always hated the pop quizzes. And it's in the situations of life that the pop quizzes come that we truly find out what we got. And the enemy will try to condemn you for that. But if you just stop and see it right, you'll say, thank you, Mr. Devil. You just showed me something that I need to work on. That little thing, that little bad mood that came out against my husband, that little, that little anger that came out against my, my wife, you know that little thing, right there? Lord, thank you right now that this thing is changing on the end. I'm being changed. But most people go like this. I'm never going to make it. And what happened was your changing moment has now turned into a graveyard. Am I making sense to anybody in this room? So there's two symptoms of change. There's two symptoms that come along with change. Are you ready? And they're not happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy, happy. No. Pain 
and frustration. Anytime that change is happening, there's always going to be pain or something uncomfortable for you. And there's going to be frustration. So I need to learn how to navigate through the pain and navigate through the frustrations. Isn't that the truth? If you're, you and I are not navigating right, we'll turn it right on ourselves. The next thing you know, it will destroy us personally or it will start destroying people around us. The first thing you want to do is start attacking people around you. Bam, bam, I'm going to shoot that one. Bam, I'm going to shoot that one. Bam, I'm going to shoot that one. Bam. If not, you'll turn the gun on yourself. Well, I'm no good. I'm un Are you seeing what I'm saying? You turn the gun on yourself. You start shooting yourself. You start going and bad mathing yourself. And the next thing you know, you start internalizing all this junk. And the next thing you know, you're stressed out. You got ulcers. You got high blood pressure. All because why? You're not responding right to the change. I'm not responding right to the change. We have to learn how to do this. Praise God. Are you with me here? Now Jesus said this in John 16, 33. You guys know this scripture. He said, in this world, you will have tribulation. Everybody say tribulation. You will have tribulation. It didn't say you might. It says what? You will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now the word tribulation is the Greek word thalipsis and it means this squeezing and pressures and crushings. Not a good thing to look up. Did I read that right? Yeah it means pressure. It means squeezings and crushing. Things come to squeeze you. Things come to put pressure on you. That's why I told you on Sunday that the transformation process is not about pressure from the outside in, but the pressure from the inside out. See, because no matter what pressure I'm facing, when I'm being transformed, the pressure is building on the inside of me, and it's pushing against that pressure. How do I navigate this? How do I do this? Go to 2 Corinthians real quick. Let me give you some quick stuff here. <coughs> Second Corinthians chapter 3. You guys, we've been here starting verse 17. Now, we're not going to stop. I'm not going to stop, Peggy. I'm not stopping on any of this stuff. i got to read, okay? Hold me accountable, ma'am. Greg, just hit me with that cane if you need to. I better get away because I may do that. <laughs> Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose hope. Verse 6, for it is God who command, who is the God. I love that. Oh, I stopped, didn't I? Greg, don't get up, please. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Now look what he says. He's getting, ready to, getting in the middle of change here. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you for all things are for your sakes that grace having spread through the, through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God therefore we do not lose hope hope even though our outward man is perishing yet the inward man is being renewed day by day for our light affliction which is but for a moment it's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are 
seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now, this is the Apostle Paul telling you and I how we navigate through change. He said, man, I've got hard pressed, right? On every side, yet not crushed. I'm in the middle of an in-between place. I have got stuff coming down on me. I got, and if you look there in verse 17, it says, for our light affliction. Everybody say affliction. It's the Greek word thalipsis, and it means tribulation. It means pressures. It means squeezings. He said, I have all this stuff coming against me, and it's light. How many of you know that anything the Apostle Paul ever dealt with was not light? If you read 2 Corinthians chapter 11, there's about like eight scriptures or nine scriptures that talk about all the stuff that he had went through. I mean, you know, shipwrecked and stoned and left for dead. And, and all, I mean, this, whatever this guy faced was not light. But however, he had got a perspective on something that made his afflictions light while he was being changed for something eternal that was going on on the inside of him. Are you with me here? The first thing, how I navigate through change, through these scriptures, number one, it's priority. Verse 16, the Apostle Paul said, Therefore we do not lose hope, or lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. He said, all this stuff is coming against me. He said, I can't stop it. It's happening everywhere around me. I'm being, I, I'm, I'm being persecuted. I got people on my back all the time. I got people hunting me down. He said, but see, I can't change that. He said, I got to make sure I get my priorities right. He said, every day I'm renewing myself Every day I'm putting my priorities right because he knew where he was going to gain his strength from. Do you understand that? And I know, I mean, believe me, I, I'm going to get to something in just a moment. But you say, well, Pastor Paul, you think the Word of God can fix anything. Guilty. I'll, I plead guilty. Because the deal is, is that I tell you, get in the Word. Get in the Word. Get in the Word. That's what the Apostle Paul said every day. I'm renovating. That's what the word renewed means. He was renovating. There was stuff being tore down out of his life, thinking that needed to, be, that the meat needed to go. There was things being built up in his life. Something was being tore down, and then all of a sudden, something was being replaced. How was he doing it? With the Word of God. This is the same guy that wrote Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, where he talks about be renewed in, the, in, the, in your mind. How's that going to happen? Through the Word. You've got to place priority on your life. Listen, this is the key. Because when you start going through change and stuff starts coming against you, whether it's with your children, whether it's with your spouse, whether it's with your marriage, you, bet, you better bet your bottom dollar. You better watch out because priorities are going to go get mixed up if you don't say, no, I'm going to make sure that I keep my priorities right. The enemy comes to try to get this stuff all jarbled. He knows where your strength comes from. So he's going to do whatever he can to keep you out of the thing that's going to cause you to be strong. This is the first thing. I've got to keep my priorities right. If you get distracted in the change, it's going to be detrimental to you. You say, well, Pastor Paul, that's easier said than done. I get that. I promise, I'm not preaching to the, to, because I think I have this all together. I'm saying when change starts blowing and the winds of state change start coming, you've got to say, listen here, I'm going to make sure I keep my life a priority. My, my life, I didn't mean it that way, it's selfish. You've got to keep your priorities right about what God's trying to do. Which means this, you've got to take time, you've got to be God's kind of person. If you are not, listen, there's going to be situations going to come to try to take you away from your family. Do you know change? Listen, change, change can be a good change. How about a new job opportunity comes your way? It's change. But not, don't you know that every, just because something has a dollar amount on it, it doesn't mean it's from God? Well, I believe in, I've been believing God for prosperity. Yeah, the enemy will send it your way to get you out of church, to get you away from your family. Amen. Well, that means I can buy a bigger car. That means I can get a bigger house. That means I can have the stuff. That's what we think like. That's what we think like. So, well, Pastor Paul, you ever thought like that? Yes. We've all thought like that. Let's just be honest. 
I mean, we got people that's getting married today because look, we got we got people getting married today because they know. Listen, it's be better to have two incomes and we can have more stuff. So I'll just marry you because you got a good job. You don't think that stuff happens? Absolutely, it does. But if you don't put your life in priority and keep yourself in priority and keep your priorities straight. Listen, the enemy will get you all jacked up. Next thing you know, well, I, I just can't be at church this weekend because I got I to gotta work. Uh, and then the next weekend comes up, I can't be at church this weekend because I got to work. And the next weekend, well, I can't work. I'm, I work late on Wednesday nights too. I can't come. Well, I'm just dead tired. I can't come. The next thing you know, the enemy's done taking you out of church. Amen. Taking you out from your kids and taking you out from your family. You better get Facebook in, in check, church. I'm telling you, it's destroying people's lives. People don't want to talk to each other anymore. Come on. Come on. Check up from the neck up right here, right? For everybody in the room. Priorities. Was well, it good that I'm witnessing to somebody online? Well, absolutely. It's a great thing. But probably they're on the other line, not even they're probably not even listening to you, and your family's over here and is suffering. Uh, I'm digging a hole, digging a hole, digging a hole, digging a hole. Filling it up, filling it up, filling it up. Because why? In the middle of change, your priorities are going to get challenged. You've got to keep priority. The Apostle Paul said, every day I'm renewing myself. He said, my outward man is perishing. There's change all around me. But every day I am getting myself in check and making sure I'm drawing my strength from him. Listen, the Lord reminded me this morning. He says, why you need time with me, boy? That's what he told me. Why well, you just pretty frank with me sometimes? He said, because I need to influence your thinking. And when you, when you start praying and open your mouth up, I start to be able to influence you. He said, this is what you need. We've got to get in there. We've got to do this. Listen, I'm a Christian. And I have a life that I have to, i got to do things too. Just like you. And I'm learning just like you. Priority. Priority. Very important. Priority. Let me show you this, because this is what happened to the, to, to the, uh, no, let's move on. We don't have time. Number two, perspective. Perspective. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 17, he said, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Verse 18 while we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Or subject to change. But the things which are eternal won't change. So in the middle of change, I've got to make sure that I keep my perspective. Change is prime real estate. Say that with me. Change is prime real estate. And I want everybody in this room, when you leave out of here tonight, I want to challenge you. The next time you start facing an issue, I want you to quit seeing it as a problem and start looking at it as an opportunity. What's the difference between a problem and an opportunity? It's your attitude. And you'll start to be transformed. And I'll, if I start taking my problems as they come, because there's a storm coming, and I say, hold on a second, I've got to have the right perspective in this storm. Making sure. It's prime real estate for change. It's prime. See, if, if you don't see it that way, you'll just see junk. See, uh, anybody in here a picker? Does anybody just do some picking? Does anybody have, anybody go, oh, Joe, anybody else honest? Uh, Joe's honest, praise the Lord. Okay, you're, uh, Billy's a picker. You know, not, he's a picker. He is. He likes to, he, he can junk. Now, he don't, I mean, he don't have a bunch of that stuff, but he likes, he likes to be able to get what I would call junk. Well, does anybody know what a picker is? American picker, right? 
The American picker, they go and they, they go to people's junk stores or they go to people's homes. They start seeing stuff that nobody else knows there's any value to it. It's like, well, that's great value right there. But that looks like, a, that looks like a, a can to me. It looks like something that should have been thrown away 15 years ago. Oh, no, you don't understand the story. And that was so-and-so's and that thing's worth $45. Well, you better keep that then. Don't throw that away. That's good money. Right? What happens, see, because, see, this is what I wrote down. Let me see. People that have inside information value things that others don't. So how in the world can you value a storm? How can you value change? By seeing it as prime real estate. By seeing it as a way for me to develop and be transformed. Now we understand what James said. He said, count it all joy when you fall into various philipses, pressures, trials. Squeezings, count it all joy. Why? Knowing this, the trying of your faith works patience. It's going to cause something to grow on the inside of you. See, listen, listen to me a second. Because Galatians 5, 22, you know, in 23, the nine fruit of the Spirit, help me out, I always had problems. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, meekness, kindness, long-suffering, and self-control. Thank you. Nine. Let me ask you guys a question. How are you, go, how are you and I going to develop, how are you going to develop long suffering? You're going to be put in situations that's going to require what? So the quicker that you and I learn, this is prime real estate for me to grow, you're probably not going to get out of this thing. You're going to keep going around the mountain. How are you going to learn? Well, I want love. I want love. God, I want love like you love. See, anybody else prayed these prayers? Oh, get ready. Because you're going to get around a bunch of unlovable people. You can't grow things in your life unless there's adversity. This is the great scheme of God. This is the way that he takes the bad and turns it for our good. He sees it more like a dumbbell. So now... It's a gym. God's gym. It's the world. And, and, and we start working through this stuff. But we don't. We murmur and we complain. Just like the children of Israel. 11 day journey took 40 years. Go look it up. It, fact check me. 11, it should have took 11 days for them to get from Egypt to the land flowing with milk and honey. I mean, let me ask you guys. Don't sit there and look at the children. They're like, well, just a bunch of stupid people. What are you doing? We're just like them. How long have you been dealing with your issue? Yeah, you're in the wilderness. And there's a reason why you're in the wilderness. Because God's trying to develop some character in your life and bring this stuff out. Are you with me here? See, some, oh my, listen, I'm going to preach right now. Come on. Ha! Because sometimes, listen, listen to me. Sometimes the vessel has to be turned upside down in order to get what's in it out. Oh, yeah, yeah, you didn't get that. You didn't get it. Don't tweet it. Don't Facebook it. I promise you didn't get it. Listen to me. Sometimes the vessel has to be jarred and turned upside down in order for the stuff that's on the inside of it to get it out. That way you become a vessel of honor. That way he can pour himself into you. Come on, somebody. Perspective. Perspective. You know, you're great. Let me tell you something. You know what your greatest tool of sanctification is? Your spouse. Boy, that was a holy hush. Well, praise the Lord. We'll shut, shut this thing down. <laughs> you know God has de destined marriage as a way to sanctify you? How was Adam going to ever learn to serve if he had nobody to serve? So God created him a helpmate. That way he could learn to serve. And you're sitting there complaining about your spouse. Quit pointing your finger. 
It's probably you that need to take, that needs to change. Praise the Lord. That went ever well, Donald. Thank you for the big amen back there. Perspective. I'm talking about how to navigate through change. I gotta go. Oh, it's late. Oh my. It's only 7:15. Praise the Lord. I got another hour. And I looked at this message today after I got done. I said, Well, it ain't gonna be long tonight. Yeah, right. I'm listen, let me move. I'm, I'm going to close. Listen. First is what? How do I navigate through change? Priority. Number two is what? Perspective. And number three is this. Praise. If you notice what the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4.13. He said we have the same spirit of faith. And faith is energized with thanksgiving. Because thanksgiving makes God big. And your problems small. Oh come. And what? Magnify the Lord with me. It's not like that you make God bigger. He just becomes bigger to you. And all you do is thank Him. Well, how can I thank Him in the storm? Praise Him in the storm. Because why? It's going to help you set your priorities. It's going to help you go and have a better perspective. It's all because of praise. Now you understand why the Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. He said this. Um, that just left me. Thank you. Mary Ann. 18. In everything what? It didn't say for. Everything. It didn't say for everything. I'm not thanking God. I'm not thanking God for stuff that's not from Him. But it's in it that I'm giving thanksgiving. In everything give thanks, for this is the what? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So you say, well, what's the will of God in this situation? If you don't know what to do, you know what the will of God is? Give thanks. I don't know how I'm going to get out of it. What's the will of God? Give thanks. I don't understand how I'm going to get out of it. What's the will of God? Give thanks. And when you praise God, listen, I'm telling you something, it will catapult you out. That's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen. I'm done. That don't mean a thing. That don't mean a thing, Kathy. Not one thing. Listen. A baby in a womb. There's a time that that baby has to move out. It outgrows the world that's in, at its end, to be birthed into another world. I'm leaving you with this. Because I feel it by the Spirit of God. There's some people in the room that it's time for you to get out of the womb. You've outgrown your world. And you wonder why you're frustrated. And the storms you're facing right now is because why? You're in a world you're not supposed to be in. The baby grows and grows. And finally it outgrows the world that it was in. And it's birthed into a brand spanking new world. So I don't know who you are in the room. That means what? The things I used to do, I can't do anymore. The people I hung around with, I can't hang around with them anymore. The places I went, I can't go there anymore. The things I used to say, I just can't go there anymore. Why? You've outgrown that place. Get out of the womb and let God birth you into the world that he's called you to. Yeah, that means you're going to go the master now. You, well, I got this all under control and my life's easy. And all of a sudden, could you imagine, can you imagine that baby when it comes out? No wonder it's screaming. People looking at him that he never seen before. <laughs> People in masks and gloves, smacking it on the behind. Probing and checking stuff all. Wouldn't you be crying to? The world, see, it's all comfortable in that world. But when you get birthed over into this world, you become the student again. There's a time that you'll outgrow that world and you'll become the student again. See, it's just you get born again, again, again. It's called glory. 
level to level. Amen?